Dr. Jason Hill points out that food production is a major factor in global warming and we can help save the planet by changing what's on our plates. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Welcome back, Tom Hartman here with you. On the line with us is Dr. Jason Hill, Professor of Bioproducts and Biosystems Engineering at the University of Minnesota. He's the uh, senior author of a recent study on food production and greenhouse gases that's absolutely fascinating. Uh, his Twitter handle, J.D. Hill. Uh, Jason Hill, Dr. Jason Hill, welcome to the program. Tell us about uh, greenhouse gases. I think most people think when you say greenhouse gases, they think tailpipe emissions or uh, oil-fired or coal-fired power plants. Uh, but there's another dimension to this. Uh, certainly. Um, thank you for having me on your show. Um, when we typically think of greenhouse gas emissions and climate change, we think of fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas. But there's another major source, and that's uh, our food system, um, land, um, use of fertilizers. All those things are major contributor contributors to climate change. Now, what does major mean? How do you quantify that? <laughs> major means that even if we were to stop using fossil fuels today, by about 2050, we will have exceeded the Paris Agreement's um, target of limiting uh, global temperature change to 1.5 degrees Celsius or higher, and by the end of the century, going two degrees. So it's a large contributor to our overall entirely impact. because of our food production. Entirely because of our food production. We don't we don't often stop to think about the carbon footprint of the things we eat as a. So as we're a not talking about world. we're not talking about the trucks that deliver the food to market or anything because if we were to electrify our entire transportation system, all that stuff goes away in terms of carbon emissions. You're talking about the way that we are treating our soil and the way that we are, um, uh, I, I'm assuming, growing vegetables and dealing with livestock. Uh, where, how do we break those things out and what do we need to do? Yeah, exactly right. You know, in, in fact, transportation is only a small part of the emissions from the global food system. It's what happens on the land. It's, um, it's converting land for uh, production. It's plowing it, which releases soil carbon. It's using fertilizers that release nitrous oxide. That's 300 times as damaging as carbon dioxide pound per pound for climate change. It's, um, it's ruminant animals that release large amounts of methane. So all that contributes um, uh, to this problem. Yeah. So uh, back in the day, Ronald Reagan, as I recall, maybe it was a, a more recent Republican, but I thought it was Reagan, was talking about cow farts and how, you know, everybody's all upset about cow farts and he made jokes about it and stuff like that. But really, you're talking about cow farts here, right? Well, part, part of it, it, it's it's more the burps, actually, um, that, that, that is responsible. Uh, so, so yeah. yes, animal agriculture has a large um, has a large carbon footprint, and that's because of emissions of methane from animals themselves, as well as emiss emissions of carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide uh, that come from crop production, which then is animal feed. Right. So we produce, you know, to produce a pound of beef, we have to produce how much, how many pounds of vegetable matter to feed that, that cow from birth to, to slaughter. Do you know? So, so one, way to, one way to think about it is for every pound of protein that you get uh, from a cow, it takes about 20 pounds of vegetable protein to produce that. Wow. And so that's that's 20 times the emissions because, you know, because it's being grown. And not only that, the, the animal proteins increase your risk of heart, heart disease and stroke and, and premature aging and all kinds of things, um, you know, uh, or at least large, you know, high large scale consumption of them. So what what do we do? I mean, I, I, I've read papers suggesting that one of the big problems with rum, ruminant animals, which is principally cows, is that. Uh, they're designed to eat grass, and that when they eat grass, they don't burp and fart so much. But when they eat grains, which causes them to get fatter faster, they do. It changes the metabolism, or it changes the, the, the microbiome, and changes the way that they digest things. Is it, is it that kind of a tweak, or is it that we need to cut back on animal agriculture, or is that we need to do it a different way? I mean, well, how, do, how do we get our hands around this, Dr. Jason Hill? 
So, you know, what we did in this paper is we looked at sort of five what we think of as, as reasonable changes in the global food system that could reduce emissions. And we looked at eating more plant-rich diets, not plant-only diets necessarily, but plant-rich diets, or eating the right number of calories, a healthy number of calories, increasing agricultural yields through, say, better practices, um, reducing the amount of waste uh, that we have in production and, and in consumption of food, and also producing crops and animals more efficiently. And when you do all those things, you can yeah. reduce greenhouse gas emissions tremendously. So, so there are things that we can do um, all across the food system, and collectively those emissions could drop dramatically if we make those changes here in the U.S. and abroad. You know, the thing that boggles my mind, um, I, there was um, somebody on TV t today talking about, it was a, a member of Congress from Ohio, and, and he was talking about how he's opposed to the Green New Deal because we need coal and gas and, 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 and natural gas and, and, uh, and, and oil power, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, really? I mean, you know, uh, driving an electric car is a really great thing. Getting, getting your power from renewable sources we do here in Portland, you know, comes from the Columbia River. Um, great thing. It's, it's you know, non-carbon. It, 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 it's like electric cars are so much cooler than regular cars. In every aspect, I see for, at the level of human, you know, quality of life, um, decarbonizing our atmosphere, we get, you know, th tens of thousands, per perhaps, I mean, you know, probably millions of people die every year from, from air pollution associated with these things, cancers and whatnot. You've got, you know, lower risk of heart disease and whatnot from eating a diet that's heavily, heavily you know, heavy on plants rather than heavy on meat, um, you know, in the, in the food, food area here. Um, it, it just, I, I get it that there are industries that have vested interests in keeping things the way they are. But is there any downside to, to your prescriptions? Is, is it going to cause, you know, outside of those people who are in those particular industries who may have to find, you know, basically a new job or another way to make a living or, or simply make their living in a slightly different way, doing the same thing that they're doing right now, producing food. Is there any big downside to this? No, I, I actually like to look more at the upsides because if we do these things, there are all sorts of other societal benefits for us. You know, eating plant-rich diets um, is good for our health. And so think of all the, all the um, things that we try to do to improve our health. Well, that's one thing that, that we know has good uh, effects. Uh, what about the other environmental impacts of um, decarbonizing and uh, wasting less and using land more efficiently and such? Cleaner water, cleaner air, those sorts of things. There are all these co-benefits of making these changes. And so while we may make them for, 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 for whatever reason we make them, if we move in these directions, we're likely to have a much better outcome. So who is champion? We're talking with Dr. Jason Hill, professor of bioproducts and biosystems engineering at the University of Minnesota and the author or one of the authors of this recent study on food production and greenhouse gases. And, and, and Dr. Hill, we have a little less than a minute left. Is there anybody? Is there, are there organizations out there? Who, who's pushing for this kind of change? Does it have a, has, it, has, it, has there been a political hook to it yet? You know, so I, 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 one of the certain things in the, in the news recently has been last week, the U.S. officially withdrew from the Paris Agreement. And so um, that, is, that is moving more toward the goals of that Paris Agreement. Uh, whoever is working toward that is working toward a good outcome because that outcome is one in which the effects of climate change can be, can be uh, reduced and those effects uh, that, that affect us all um, can be shared by the whole world. Yeah, and I think the two leading causes of death in the United States are heart disease and cancer, both of which would be reduced by people going to a heavier, more of a plant-based diet. Uh, Doc, and, and, and Biden, and President-elect Biden has said that he's going to re-sign the, the Paris Agreement, which is a good thing. Dr. Jason Hill, thanks for dropping by. It's great talking with you. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome.